most likely the final video. If you have actually stuck around for what seems to be the two hours, thank you very much. That's a lot of games, and if you probably didn't understand why, it's like what I've done with this list of, uh, or at least my wish list. It's more of like it's less of games of what I want, but more like here's a canon of, of modern video games, good modern video games of these particular genres that I like. If I wish there could be a way to adjust it, because some of these is like. I have no intention of playing, but I know other people will play because it's basically it's like, here's Call of Duty, but set in uh, Raja, India, or whatever. You know, just for friends and associates and whatnot, as I see in real life, on the internet, and on the various internet communities that I belong to. Okay, so let's finish this up, and hopefully I didn't just waste two hours of my life because I don't know how to record desktop efficiently these days um okay non-guns doppelganger edition this is from a top 10 roguelike metroidvania style you can see it has a very particular art style black white red uh classic thing i believe it is more pew pew it is very very action active based kind of like no i'm trying to think of a modern indie game that, that has run and gun and jumping recommended for those things Binding of Isaac meets Cookie Clicker, but it's not quite Binding of Isaac because the environments are two-dimensional. And Cookie Clicker. So I guess the more you kill, the more stuff you get, and you kind of build up into the billions and millions of points for, I guess, blood? Okay, non-guns, doppelganger edition. Pray for Gods. I believe it's through a recommendation of the kind of modern... Modern action RPGs that aren't open world kind of uh, Bethsaida games. Nor setting, survival, yeah. I believe I saw this in um, um, video footage of like uh, of current video game news. Hyperlight Drifter. I believe this is recommended personally from uh, various streamer, fran uh, streamer friends or people I know through streaming. Associates or whatnot. And they basically say like this is an excellent game. It's Zelda-ish, but smooth. You know, top-down Zelda, great. Great look, great gameplay, great game feel. Hyper Light Drifter. Okay, Mummy Demastered by WayForward. Metroidvania, Mummy, probably a better Mummy than the current reboot of the Mummy movie. I believe, uh, oh, and I believe they say, like, the they reiterate upon the original, um, the alien Metroidvania game that WayForward did. And the gist is when you die, oh, you don't play the protagonist. You actually play as the soldier, the team of soldiers. And similar to the Alien game is like when you die, your body is there, and then you can go and scavenge the body, or the body may turn into uh, one of the zombie, uh, the mummy, uh, the mummy uh, enemies. You know, you get possessed and zombified. Okay, mummy demastered. I don't know if I should have this on 3DS or DS. I don't even sure if it's a game on DS, but it's way forward. They just do great stuff constantly. Gestalt, Steam and Cinder, Metroidvania recommendation, steampunk theme. That's about it. In the Wild West, steampunk. Okay, so you like that? It's let's see. It's not released yet. Need to play test it. You know. Zero Ranger. I saw this on Dying Camel screen, uh, stream. Not stream. It's a shmup. Looks fun. Limited color palette. It reminds me of you know Game Boy style games. I'm not good at them. I, oh, and it's also Bullet Hell. I can't dodge Bullet Hells. Like I'm not. I haven't played a Toho game and whatnot. It seems all the stuff that I get happens to be Bullet Hell type of deals. Anyways, is there any shmup that isn't Bullet Hell? Anyways, I recommend it. Or at least I I saw it. It looked fun don't know if i actually enjoy fun beating i think gradius 3 is the only game i might have beaten as a shmup yeah Proteus is fun okay cyber shadow by yacht club games it's ninja gaiden it's not yet finished everybody's gonna love it like shovel knight so it's gonna be do ninja gaiden everybody will love it the only negative will be that it doesn't do anything new like they say like shovel knight just took all these different elements put them together so Yacht Club game is basically how Blizzard used to be, or as I joke, he said. Dude, stop. Okay, this is a meta game. It's humorous. It's basically, I think it's you do you do the opposite of what 
you basically play to annoy the character. So the puzzles are basically annoying the the character, but you solve the puzzle by doing it wrong. I'm gonna say like mom hid my video game. Oh, I guess it's also like WarioWare. Yeah, it's like just very many mini it, WarioWare, but it's the uh, you don't want the correct solution. Stardust Warriors, Galaxy Climax, Shmup Brawler. So I think this is kind of like okay. I think this was recommended as just good um, as a top ten list. No, this is old. 2015 couldn't be from that. Maybe an exploration of co-op, um, co-op brawler games. Because now looking at this, this looks like Smash Brothers. Not the fact that uh, the positioning, but that there's um, this reminds me of Smash Brothers in that you can shoot, there's aiming and whatnot. So looks like fun mecha games. Don't know how this snuck in. Yeah, recommendation. Stardust Galaxy Warriors Stellar Climax. Foregone. Top 10 list of uh, run and gun shooter, hack and slash, beautiful, gorgeous, pixel art, side scroller. Not Metroidvania, so just start to finish. Survive and kill. Dead Cells! That's the game I'm trying to think of when everybody's like, when I'm thinking about 2D stuff. Dead Cells. Because I'm just going to like Contra. It's like, no, it's not Contra. It's like, I'm thinking something else. Dead Cells. Not roguelike, just so it's, it's polished. Or it, it should be, no. I shouldn't say polish, but you know, like has specifics and it'll be designed that way, hopefully. A medieval. Modern FPS. Religious theme. I'm going to say I was watching this on Paskey, or the fact that I added, in my trying to educate myself about first person shooters, I have Hexen. I have, I don't know the name of the game, but it's red and it's like colonial New England and it only has one word. See, that's. This is why I'm going through the list. So like, if I don't remember what the name of the game is, do I really want it? So yeah, I think this is homage or to Redemption, which is like a very obscure, unknown PC first-person shooter Christian theme. Then just like, okay, carry on. Everybody knows this. You play the monster and eat things. EVO, Search for Evening, Cubivore, uh, Munchables. I like that type of game. I'm on to Vore. I just. It's it's like Rampage. You play the monster and go boom, boom, bash, bash, okay? It's fun doing that for a change rather than being the good guy. You know, this is why people like Doom. It's like the demons are afraid of the hero as opposed to the other way around. Okay, Monster Sanctuary. I've seen this on an imager for a very long time and open thing. So this is Terraria, but you don't craft and collect and build things. You gather monsters and it's Pokemon. And it's kind of... um real-time strategy based so soul Sarah. if you like act razor for the super nintendo act razor one where you're both playing as god fighting a 2d stage and helping your people as the little chair as a little angel fighting off demons and whatnot this is the game for you this is act soul Sarah. it's act razor Yu-Gi-Oh! legacy of the duelist this is apparently the definitive Yu-Gi-Oh! game if you want to play the original, the classic version of Yu-Gi-Oh! So Yu-Gi-Oh! Generation 1, Yu-Gi-Oh! the first anime, which I believe the community calls Caveman Yu-Gi-Oh! Or if you want to play through very specific eras of Yu-Gi-Oh! this is where you play it. So there's story mode. Oh, and I know from streamers, the DLC is not worth it. DLC in this game is absolutely not worth it. Five bucks is like five dollars for four duels or five duels. It's like, it's not much. Do not, this DLC, no. Bridal Princess Maiden. This is Ghosts and Goblins. If you like Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghosts and Demons, Battle Princess Madeline. I wish I liked the Ghosts and Goblins games. I like watching them. I am too impatient to memorize every single memorize every single specific monster and how to react. And two hits is brutal. Okay, I don't know if it's just as brutal, but Battle Princess Madeline, Madeline, you want more go uh, Ghosts and Goblins? Here you go. For a win. 
If you like Sega Genesis platformers, this is it. Not the Sonic style, but more akin to the kid that changes heads. Kid Chameleon. Okay. You like Genesis style platformers? You like Genesis style aesthetics? You like the platformers where the world is very big and has many layers as opposed to just going horizontal, so Sonic style levels rather than Mario style levels? Furwind. Songbird Symphony. I want to say I got this from extra credits, but um, maybe something else. I believe it's a platformer, but and when you come across battles, you have to do a rhythm game. So, Lamentium. Okay, this is a this is through recommendations of Lovecraft and Lovecraft Mythos. Yep, top down. So basically Zelda, but. In, Zelda but horror style, I would say. I'm pretty sure they don't say Zelda because you have a gun. Okay, second extinction. I believe I got this because of literally the description. I don't remember how I got the description, but basically it's like big map, big dinosaurs, big guns, face and never stretch with your friends. Second extinction is online. Things. So basically it's you have a big... It's a big dumb game where you basically hunt T-Rexes and dinosaurs. Okay, Fury Unleashed. Action roguelike platformer. I think it's just recommended as a platformer or possibly a Poland game. Okay, Ruby, the Wayward Mira. Re re recommended through Metroidvania game. Seen to be Amazonian. Game about a dying planet. So it's Metroidvania. It kind of reminds me more of a cave story. So yeah, so you go around, and explore, gain items, um, fight, kill things. Us Divine Menace. I believe I was just exploring RPGs, and these were recommendations. Looked like it was an RPG maker, but it's very well done and polished, which is why it brought got brought over here. Rad. Okay, everybody should know about this. This is by Double Fine. It's a roguelike, top-down, so Binding of Isaac, shooty things. As you gain your different perks, you actually mutate and change your body. It has the 80s neon aesthetic. you think I'd be all over this, but I'm not. I kind of play-tested it a bit, and it's, it didn't grab me, but I don't know if it's burnout from roguelikes. But I think this may work out more for me, because I want to say it's more geared towards kids, so it might be more forgiving, but... It, it just didn't grip me. It didn't grip me. Very strange. Okay, but rad. Record Definitive Edition. This is by Kenji Inafune and Metroid Prime people. It's just recommended this. This was recommended to me before. Uh, Mighty Switch Force kind of went kaput. Or this was being released as Mighty Switch Force went kaput, so... It's mixed. I don't know how much of this just hatred for that kind of flop, but just seems to be good kind of modern, uh, modern action game. Metal Gear. I don't know. I don't know how God of War plays. I don't know how Assassin's Creed plays. So, yeah, modernish game. I'm very out of my element in describing it. Recore Definitive Edition. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. This is a classic hidden gem on the PC. It is a western style RPG. It is not open sandbox, so it has a linear story. There may be side quests, but they're not mandatory. It's very guided. So it's not like Elder Scrolls. It is not like Fallout. I don't know about Deus Ex and can't recommend um, other things about Deus Ex as an RPG, but basically RPG is by an actual pen and paper system, it's by Vampire the Masquerade. Instead of having classes, you're different vampire clans. So that's the thing, this game has great replayability. I'm barely gonna probably play it once and barely watch one playthrough of it. So basically it gives you vampires all the way from the classic horrible zombie looking blood sucking undead ghouls of Count Orlock to modern Anne Rice vampires of being very sexy goth Victorians. Okay, so there's different clans and they give you all the different and they're basically classes so it affects your ability to physically fight, use guns, use your vampire powers, suck blood, 
your ability to pass as human, and in a sense, your dialogue. Apparently, there's one. See, that's the one thing like for replayability. Like, there's one class that's like called Oracle. Like, they're very good at telling the future, and so your dialogue choices are schizophrenia word salad. It's just random words. But if you kind of know the lore and the story, you can kind of discern what you're actually saying or actually what you're hearing the people say. It's like the people say random, like, like instead of the story, you hear random gibberish and you can discern what to do and whatnot because you're that um, in touch with the future and psychic emanations and whatnot. So, yeah. The Surge. Is this one of the first... Dark Souls clone, except it's sci-fi themed instead of medieval Europe. And the gist about it is that you can actually target various parts of the body of whom you're attacking. And so if you knock off the arm, you're more likely to get the body parts of the arm. If you knock off the legs, you get the body parts of the legs. The biggest complaint people have is that you have to grind for the particular parts, and that can be annoying. On top of the aggravation of being a Souls game, so it just kicks you right in the gonads every single moment it gives a chance. And there's the Surge 2. I don't know if the Surge 2 is just this, but more refined, or if it does something extremely different like Dark Souls 2 did. Okay, Rising Hell. This, I believe, was recommended via Slain Back from Hull and Brawlhalla and Volgar the Viking, and just good. 2D, pu- uh, 2D kill them all games. Ninja Gaiden, Contra, Dead Cells, Castlevania, Rising Hell. Okay, you need that to do its thing? In most. Okay, I am ambivalent about this game because from the look at it, it reminds me of Limbo, where it's like the super duper artsy indie game. Indie as opposed to indie, as Strogbad did in his email of indie. Where there's indie where it's basically Hollywood movie but just trying to pass off as being artsy. And then there's true indie where you're literally one student filming in black and white and in French smoking a cigar with a pancake flipping in slow motion. So anyways. And somewhere, somehow, I figured out or found out they're saying that this is not a platformer hell type game. This is not a modern indie game. Like, it has a good story and whatnot. So I'm like... Like I said, I'm ambivalent about it. Like, about is there an actual story? Because it's like, oh, atmos- environmental storytelling and atmospheric storytelling is more of like I need a little. I'm used to having a bit more concrete. Like I don't mind story, but I also want like worlds, levels, progression, stages. Eh, I don't know. Okay, bite the bullet. I believe recommended Contra, Turrican, um action game. Go left to right, kill everything. Flint hook. Action roguelike. I believe it's recommended. I think I like the movement because I believe you have a you have a hook shock, so it's by on commando, so you're swinging place to place. The fact that it's roguelike and actiony, I or, or roguelike, so procedural areas and memorizing things. Maybe the fact that there's no meta and it's just get from point A to point B um, instead of getting the right set of random perks would help. But I don't know. Okay, E version classic. I would say golden age of indie games. Indie games before indie games became popular. Indie games before Limbo and people realize. Like, oh, like this is indie games of like Cave Story and Ikachan and let's see what else. Aquaria, you know. Steam was not invented yet, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm aware there's the free version of it somewhere, but, you know. Um, and I'm aware of the ending, but, you know, this is a platformer. Go left to right, very cute. I know the twist. I'll just get it super cheap and to enjoy it. Evil Genius 2, World Domination. So this is a sequel to Evil Genius. They really want to... This dev team really loves the original game, is really doing... trying to do it justice, and is trying to be a true sequel of that. It's a game, Evil Genius, but it's just going to polish away all the bad stuff about it. So... Okay. One more. Ah, we're in the clear. We're almost done. 